Good evening. Nate Daniel, could you please join us? Pledge of allegiance. Mm. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for September 24th. We, now, first thing we'll have is a second hearing on the RSA 4114 for number 2, 8th Street, map 197, lot 39. A release deed restriction number 3, no fences may be erected upon such promises, premises other than ornamental fences and no, and no then and at 3 foot height. The petitioner requests that the deed release for restriction number 3 on the fencing on 2 8th Street property they are looking to replace the existing three foot fence with a four foot fence this will be of ornamental nature and the reason is request to prevent our dogs from jumping over the fence into the neighbor's yard is there anybody here that wants to speak on this hearing seeing none I'll bring it back to the board anybody okay, thank you so this is a second hearing we'll close this hearing at 702 702 Three. public comment Anybody in the public who wants to speak? Following last week's meeting, I felt it necessary to come and speak to you tonight. I have a letter for each and every one of you, but I would like to read it aloud so the public can hear what I have to say as well. After regretfully watching last week's selectmen's meeting on the day after, I would like to take this opportunity to inform you and the residents of Hampton of the events preceding last week's meeting so that you, you and the residents will have a clear view of the truth. I truly believe you were all having a discussion based on the information you had at the time and that you were denied certain information that may give you a different view of the request in question. On August 9th, I met with Chairman Bridal to discuss a management issue that I, that I was and still am having and to get the request and to request the assistance of the Board of Selectmen in order to resolve the issue. After describing the issue in full detail, Chairman Bridal was verbally in full agreement that this issue needed to be addressed and resolved, and he suggested a non-public session with the Selectmen in order for you to receive the details directly from me. He suggested that I meet with you in non-public session on Monday, August 13th. I advised Chairman Bridal at that time that I would be out of town that evening but that I could be available to the next selectman's meeting on Monday, August 27th. He advised me that he would schedule the non-public -pub meeting for that date, and I had no reason to believe otherwise. At no time did Selectman Bridal advise me to put the request in writing, nor have I ever been required to put, it in, put, to put in writing a request to meet with this or any prior board. On Thursday, August 23rd, just four days before the August 27th meeting and not having heard back from Chairman Bridal confirming the meeting, I asked him if we were all set for Monday night. Chairman Bridal responded by saying, oh yeah, no, I couldn't get the votes of the rest of the board to meet and discuss the issue, so there will be no meeting. As you can imagine, I was less than happy, insulted, and appalled as another elected official to be denied the opportunity to meet with the board to discuss what I felt was a very important issue within my department which would ultimately negatively and directly affect the residents and voters of this town. On Wednesday, September 12th, I was approached by Selectwoman Barnes who advised me that she had just learned from a resident that I had been denied a meeting with the Board of Selectmen and that she knew nothing about it. The next day, Selectman Woolsey visited my office asking questions and advised me that she too knew nothing about the meeting request. This prompted me to wonder if Selectman Waddell and Selectman Griffin were aware, but at this point it didn't matter because the denial and refusal to provide me with the tools to do my job efficiently and effectively was the straw that broke the camel's back of my 21-year respectful, hardworking, and loyal tenure here with the town of Hampton. I wonder how a board can be against a meeting with another elected official without the entire board being aware of it. It saddens me to realize that those of you who made extensive comment about the issue last week not only did not have a clear understanding of the truth, but you did not even make an attempt to contact me to inform me that I would be discussed in public 
at the meeting so that I could be present and to get a clear understanding of what really happened. What saddens me even more than that is that I am spending my very last selectmen's meeting feeling the need to defend myself. I can only hope that surely upon my retirement will be afforded the opportunity to be heard regardless of the topic. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, nothing at that at this point. Uh, yeah, I just want to remind everyone this Wednesday is the uh, public informational meeting by uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation at Marston School. For the bridge. For the bridge, the, for the bridge I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Jim? Uh, nothing really. No. Rick? No, um, I think that uh, it was Nancy Stiles did a wonderful job uh, on Wednesday night uh, with the Hampton Beach Area Commission transportation segment of the study that we've been doing was, um, what do you call it, uh, put into the master plan. It was amended into part of the master plan, and the next we'll be uh, talking, I believe, on um, drainage. And uh, it worked out very well. Nancy has done a wonderful job, and it's very refreshing to see how much progress has made, been made there. All right. Approval of the minutes, September 10th, 2018, public session. I will so move. Second. Mo move, seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Consent agenda, we have uh, cemetery deeds, we have a raffle permit for the Rotary Club, and we have a road closure permit for Campbell Drive. A motion to move that, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Ah, Christine. Christine Pullman. Christine. Good evening. Good evening. So everyone should have uh, received their August financials. Yep. And they should be on the website and we're sent out to the budget committee also. While I get to the right page here. Okay. So we are at the eighth report of the year and the target is 66.67%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 17 to 18. The 2018 revenue is less than 17 revenue by $187,537. The items that make up the majority of this shortfall is interest on taxes, building permits, highway subsidy, which was related to the money the town received in seven, the additional money that the town received in 2017, totaling 267,543. Sludge and the rice sewer agreement. Some items that are running above the 2017 tar uh, amount was motor vehicle registration, parking tickets, transfer station, parking lot daily revenue, district court fines, and the real estate trust. The month's total income was $652,801. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $322,087. Interest on taxes, at $10,517, building permits at $14,791, state water pollution control at $62,859, departmental income at $65,632, parking lot income at $84,780, and the real estate trust at $57,666. On the expense side of things, you'll find that we are 67.44% spent or over bu budget by $189,821 or 0.77%. In August of 17, we were under budget by $369,425 or 1.5%. Although this may be concerning, I remind everyone that we are on a default budget year. I also think it is important to point out that a lot of annual and semi-annual bills have been paid at this point. Some examples of these are the property liability insurance, 
the workers' compensation, hydrants, and the majority of the software maintenance and support contracts have all been paid too. So um, I still have hope that we will level everything out and come back to a good place within like the next month or so with summer over now and those bills being paid. General government is at 67.18%. Under general government, the following sections are over target. The town manager, legal, cemetery, municipal insurance, and parking administration. The police department is at 65.69%. The fire department is at 64.96%. Emergency management is at 77% and other safety services, which is the hydrants, is at 104.62%, but we have made both the payments that are paid annually for hydrants. Public works as a whole is at 68.18%. Something to note here is that um, I have removed the cost related to the temporary force main since that was part of the Warren article that passed. So that has brought them uh, closer in line with what the target is for the month. Mosquito control is at 68.9%. The library is at 71.37%. Patriotic purposes is at 86.2%. Uh, let's see, when you get to the revenue funds, Fund 24 Recreation has a balance of $195,782. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $294,169. Fund 26 for private detail, has a balance of $167,097. Fund 27, the EMS fund, has a balance of $393,344. And the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018, total $34,018, with a balance in the account of $217,413, and board approved. Um, well, it's actually the fees collected to date are 413,445 and the board has uh, expenditures totaling 117,676 which have been approved and I think that number has changed since last week I think we rescinded one approval and approved a project of um, a lesser cost so that number will actually come the balance in the account will come up slightly but I had already done these reports so I didn't feel it was appropriate to uh, go back and change it after the action of the board. So that'll be reported in September. So that'll be the 99,737 will be a little bit higher when I come back to you with the September financials. And that is the end of the? Yes. Um, on the same page, uh, Christy, the um, wastewater system development charge. Yes. We put that in in, oh my goodness, around 2014, Fred? Or, or Somewhere right in that area. And the purpose of that was to help compensate the town and the uh, wastewater, with the wastewater problem, <coughs> having buildings um, remodeled and so forth and adding extra bathrooms. So it was, I, I call it the bathroom charge, but whatever. But uh, $413,000 yes. is being, is available for the Public Works Department uh, for what they need to do at the treatment plant, it's a smaller. Uh, that was the total, those are the total fees that have been collected. A lot of that has already been used. The balance yeah. in the account is uh, 99,737. Right, yes. but over the past oh, yes. say five years, four or five years, uh, we have taken in the 413,000. Correct. Which never would have been available to public works. Correct. Had that not gone through, so I'm uh, I'm very proud of that. And they do use it, as you've seen, oh, yes. and as the board has approved, so. Oh, yes. It's not like it's just sitting there, it's actually being used for projects for them. Yeah, and I have a couple of questions in the back here. Okay. Um, actually, I guess more for the for the board with the here we go um, on Christie's recap general fund fiscal year 2018 this is page 18 of 20 I noticed a couple of things in here the sidewalks uh, warrant article 25,000 do we know whether any of that is going to be touched this year yes because all of it. it it will be used will okay be used. And the other is uh, down toward the bottom, replace town office door, which you have already done, the already front door. And I did ask Fred because I had uh, people saying the new front doors in the town office are very good 
for accessing the building, but then if people are uh, handicapped or in wheelchairs, it's <laughs> the inner doors are difficult to open. So I asked Fred if he would consider um, uh, getting a replacement inner door next year, like the outer door, so that it will just open. So I'm hoping that we are able to do that when we're getting together the uh, the budget and or the sp or special money articles. Thank you very much, Christy. You're welcome. Gina. Thanks for the report, Christy. Um, great job. We're pretty much in line considering we're on a default budget and we've had a couple emergencies here or there and things like that, so good job. I had a question on the line item for uh, preliminary design downtown. Yep. I know the board authorized, which I'm in full agreement that we did it as far as reallocating what hasn't been used back to Experience Hampton. But I've been getting a lot of questions on it, so I was wondering if you could just perhaps explain what we did. Okay. Well, it's my understanding that the board was looking at this the same way that I do, that the Warren article was passed for $300,000. Yeah. It was 30000 of it coming from Experience Hampton. Yeah. So that was a 90-10 split. 90% paid through the Warren article, 10% being mm -hmm. money from Experience Hampton. So we had $43,875.60 worth of expenditures from that Warren article. Oh, it does span over the two years, so the accounting piece of it becomes a little challenging, but the simplest way to explain it is that we had the $43,875.60 expended. So my thought, what my understanding was that 90% would come from the Warren article, and $4,387.56 would be the 10% proportionate of what right, um, right. Experience Hampton. So is our intention this week, after the board's vote last <laughs> week, to return to Experience Hampton $25,612.44, which would be the difference between the $30,000 and the $4,387. 56 would be that would be their expenditures yeah. and when the board authorized any of this <coughs> money to be spent for this Warren article it was after we did receive the 30,000 from experience Hampton which was all part of how the Warren article was written yeah if I recollect correctly the board wouldn't enter into that first contract with Unitel until the 30,000 had been received I know we didn't spend anything and I think that the contract wasn't even signed until the 30,000 was received so all right perfect thank Good. you mm -hmm. thank you Jim Christy, this is the second month that we've been lower on revenue, right? On revenue? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I have July, right? Wasn't that last I month, too, that you said we were, we were lower? It says the 18 revenue was greater than the 17 revenue last month, in July. Okay, all right. So this is the first month that revenue is less? Um, I have to go back a couple. I think there's been a probably at least one other time That's this year, something. but um, when I go back to June and July, they're both the same, greater, greater, greater. And some of it's related to the money we received from the highway subsidy. Like Correct. The, the large portion of it is because, as you can see, last year we got $267,543 that was dedicated, had to be dedicated to highway projects. Yeah. Um, there was like that additional funds that came from the uh, state. And we're only under 187537 So Okay, so it's not something that, that, that you consider we should be concerned about at this point no because I think all of your areas where your revenue continues to grow are still growing as I pointed out here because I was only going to show where the shortfalls were but I decided that it was also important to show where the overages were and they were in the areas that you expect like the motor vehicles and the parking you know parking tickets has even grown a lot this year because they have a larger parking enforcement Right. Um, yeah. You know, so those areas, uh, transfer station, parking lot daily, those areas continue to grow. So okay. the only one that was down that was a little surprising was the building permits, but mm -hmm. I think it's all just based on the size of the projects, what comes in, when it comes in, and timing. Um, and what from 17 to 18. What percentage of our bu budget is revenue is building permits? Oh, very is small. It's very like 200 small. and something okay, thousand, so, so that's a very small. Yeah, I'm just saying that was the only one that kind of took me by surprise that the building permits were a little bit lower. But then, like I said, it's all about timing. And we had yeah. the Cornerstone and the Spring Hill Suites, which probably got a majority of their per permits in 17, even though a lot of the building is going on now. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then one that I noticed that's interesting is that uh, dog licenses, right? 
up 155 <laughs> percent. It's a small number, though. Yeah, I know it's a small number. But she but must have collected more than yeah. uh, normal in, uh, in the town clerk, yes. Yeah, and fish and game registration is way up, right? Yep. Small number, but then again. Right. And then we also have to remember that it's very hard to budget for revenue, and that's why I think it was two years ago now that the auditors suggest that, we, uh, that I update it on a quarterly basis. And then we also do it again um, for September 1st for DRA, the Department of Revenue. And then we do it again at the time of the tax rate setting because they want our revenues to be as close to accurate as they possibly can because that helps yeah. to lower everybody's tax rate, you know. Good. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great report. Everything seems to be going great. Parking lots are still going to be, we still have a number of shows, don't we? So. Yes, we do. I believe until into November. Yeah, so and I think they plan to be open at the Ashworth lot, correct? We are planning to keep the Ashworth lot open for every show. We have staff available. Oh. Good. Good. Right, we had a deposit today from the whatever shows were over the weekend. We had uh, <laughs> revenue come in today. So. Very good. Good report. Thank you. Thanks. I think I have one more item. Correct. Okay. No. Yep. Do I have one more item? Warren article yep. okay. 18. Yes. So first I just want to clarify that there is more waivers listed on there than, than need to be approved. We only need two waivers. We need uh, waiver 718-5.1, which I will read to you quickly here. Yeah. It is just the policy waiver that says the Board of Selectmen may by vote grant a waiver from the provisions of this policy if they find that the waiver that is to be granted is in the best interest of the town of hampton as and is in the spirit of this policy and then the other one that we do need is um 718-4b and at the very end of that one the very last paragraph under that section reads the board of selectmen may authorize exception exceptions to the requirements to bid and solicit professional proposals by majority vote for items with the estimated cost of fifty thousand or less uh -huh. And by a two-thirds majority vote for <coughs> items with an estimated cost of more than fifty thousand. So I just wanted to clarify that first, since there was multiple waivers listed on the agenda, but it's really only the two. Jamie and I went back over that today. Um, so basically, what we are attempting to do here is we have the IT staff has worked very hard um, and done a lot of research in regards to upgrading the town's website that has been a topic of discussion at many levels over the past several years that the face of the town needs to be more friendly so to speak more user friendly more visual friendly in multiple ways so both dylan and paul um, deserve kudos for a lot of the hard work that has been put in here to contact companies that do this um, in new hampshire and outside of new hampshire ones that are trying to break in to here they've got received quotes from three of them two of them are already in new hampshire the other one is just coming into new hampshire um and this details all of the details for you this is in regards to the warren article number 18 that was passed by the voters at the election in march it was for it upgrades the first goal was to upgrade the software at the fire department which you guys voted on probably at least a month or so maybe a little bit longer ago now and the second one was for our website outsourcing the town's website so we I propose the memo to you with all the details I can go through as many of them as you'd like um, we're hoping to go with Civic Plus their quote was twenty one thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars it's slightly above the lowest quote that we had because we had three that we were work with that we were three companies that we were working with the lowest one was eighteen thousand however they had additional cost to bring forward data that was over 10 years. They only bring forward 10 years, and we have many, many years of information on there. Plus, they had some restriction, additional, not restrictions, but additional cost in regards to any add-ons that we um, wanted that we didn't seem to find with either Civic Plus or the Revise, the other vendor, that we had presentations from and saw what they had to offer. So I can field questions I guess or I can read the whole memo whatever you guys prefer and I do have a little PowerPoint if you guys want to I can pass that out to you too so any questions I think if we just have a copy of it but what what is the uh, purpose of Roman 4 
Roman four. Control, supervision, and enforcement. That is that on the agenda? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's why we. I don't. We're not. Christina put those on in the town manager's office, yeah. but Jamie and I had only asked for the two. So we, when Jamie and I reviewed it today, that's why I came to you. And the very first thing I expressed is that we need to remove some of those because they, we didn't feel that they were appropriate oh, okay. for this waiver. You really only need to do the two waivers, 718-5.1 and 718-4B. Okay. So I can pass these around, Mary Louise. Okay. Oh. Regina, oh, you have any you. questions? Oh, I, I don't have any questions. I'm ready to make a motion. So I'll, Jim? I'll, I'll second you if you're. you Any questions? Motioning. I'm no. <laughs> no. Rick, do you have any questions? No. All right, so Regina, you want to make a motion to? I'll make a motion to allow the waivers from the purchasing policy. Second. On number two and number three as? Roman two and three, yes. Okay. For a second, all those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for we'll working on that. So, I think that was all I, you had for me, right? Yep. Good. That's all we had. Escape right. while you can. I'm going to escape while I can. <laughs> Cheese soya. The Good evening. Good evening. So the topic I believe I'm here for is to give you an update on the uh, Legionnaires outbreak that we've experienced uh, in our community. Uh, just for the public's uh, record, I'm going to read the latest release, which was on September 18th, uh, 2018, and this came from the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services. Update number six on outbreak of Legionnaires disease associated with the area of Ashworth Avenue. Hold on a second. Max, you all set? I have a screen to look up, honestly. Well, we're trying to get He's back to me. He's Sorry, I love that. Thank you. No, that's okay. Good catch. <laughs> With the area of uh, Ashworth Avenue at Hampton, New Hampshire. The New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, the US, U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the town of Hampton are winding down their investigation into an outbreak of Legionnaires disease in Hampton, New Hampshire. A total of 18 individuals have been confirmed to have Legionnaires disease associated with Ashworth Avenue and the surrounding area. There have not been any new individuals reported to the DHHS with, uh, with suspected or confirmed Legionnaires disease since the hot tubs at the Sands Resort and the Harris Sea Ranch Motel were shut down the last week in August. The summary report is there was 18 uh, confirmed onset of illnesses were uh, June 10th of this year to August 26th, hospitalized with 16 and with one death resulting. The CDC has sent the DHHS the results of testing of the environmental samples taken from the Sands Resort and Harris Sea Ranch. Water samples taken from the Sands Resort hot tub have been found to be growing the same strain of Legionella bacteria that was isolated from the patient diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease and reported staying at the Sands Resort. This suggests the hot tub at the Sands Resort as a source of Legionnaire's disease. Additionally, because early test results from multiple water and environmental samples at the Sands Resort showed Legionella contamination. The Sands Resort hired an environmental consultant to clean and monitor the water facility's water system. The Sands water system was cleaned the week of September 3rd, and the environmental consultant has collected the new water samples that are being tested at an independent laboratory to make sure the Legionella bacteria at the facility have been eliminated. The Legionnaire's disease risk to the public is reduced while the hot tub is closed and the water system is undergoing remediation. The absence of any new individuals with Legionnaire's disease since the closure of the hot tub suggests that the current health risk to the community is low. All environmental and water test results from the Harris Sea Ranch Motel hot tub have returned negative for Legionella. The absence of Legionella may be due to the very high levels of chlorination found in this hot tub at the time of sampling. So the Harris Sea Ranch Motel cannot be completely ruled out as a potential source of Legionnaire's disease. Not all people associated with this outbreak reported contact with the Sands Resort, but the environmental assessment and test results have not revealed any other source of Legionnaire's disease outbreak. According to the CDC, Legionella can be found naturally in fresh water and environmental sources when introduced into a building's water system. It can grow and spread in devices such as hot, uh, hot water tanks, shower heads, and hot tubs that have not, well, have not been well maintained. This is why it is so important that building owners and managers take steps to reduce the risk of Legionella 
and keep the water in the building safe. And for, for more information on the Legion outbreak, please visit and that's, that's the uh, DHH website uh, that we've had up on our town website. So that is the latest, and I believe it's probably going to be the final uh, yeah. documentation as far as press release comes from DHHS. Mary Louise. Uh, Chief, uh, next summer will roll around. Uh, <clears throat> is there a requirement when you own an establishment that has a hot tub for the state to be aware of it, to inspect it, to... Yes, there how is. How does that work? That's through DES, and you are required, if you have a pool or a hot tub, to be registered with the state of New Hampshire for inspection. Problem is, uh, my understanding is that there's a very minimal staff that covers the entire, not just the entire region, the entire state for pool inspections. So they have a requirement that they can't fulfill. So you're stuck with this stuff. Well, I can't answer that. Can we have low? Well, I, uh, we right. can speculate on that to, as to whether this individual that's responsible for mm -hmm. doing those inspections is able to keep up. I can't answer that. That, that would uh, the commissioner of DES should probably mm -hmm. be posed with that question as to whether they need to, in, you know, increase mm -hmm. the number of people doing those inspections. But you still apparently have something on the books that is supposedly a mandate for these people operating um, businesses. Yeah that have the hot tubs. So that's going to leave you with a problem if these things aren't being inspected or looked at. It's all going to go in your lap again. Um, not necessarily because the, the town does not have a requirement to inspect pools or hot tubs. That is strictly a state uh, mandate. Mm -hmm. So we don't have anybody that's trained or have right. the, the testing equipment to do that. So the only thing I could say is that I believe that this was a learning experience for everybody involved. Well, I hope so. And that I think we're more aware that as we grow and we see changes at the beach or anywhere in town, yep. that I think pretty much we all know now that when we see constructions that, that offer pools or hot tubs in their facilities, they'll be kindly reminded of a number, you know, we have the RPC meetings, um, mm -hmm. uh, the PRC meetings rather, and those type of meetings, those things are going to be made aware to the builders or the people running these facilities. I just have a problem with having requirements, whether it's the town or the state, and then there's no enforcement. I couldn't and agree with you more. You a I couldn't agree problem with you more. Too. Regina, um, yeah, I agree with you, Chief. I think that hopefully yeah. this is a learning experience, and if there are like set regulations, whether or not they're enforced, maybe people can take a look at them and hopefully try to comply with them on their own. But I mm. thank you for the report. Jim? Yeah, I just want to say thanks. You guys did a good job. The fire department did a good job. You worked with the CDC and yeah. the DHS. Yes. So that the town employees were there all the time assisting with the... We offered when this when, when uh, the manager contacted me uh, that first day, I believe it was Friday the 24th, we got right on the, uh, on the line with our, re our counterparts with DHHS. And keep in mind, the state of New Hampshire hasn't seen an outbreak of this magnitude in probably 15 to 20 years. Mm. Uh, we average about 30 cases a year in the entire state. We wound up with 18. Um, so this is, this is not a everyday occurrence in the state of New Hampshire. So when the, f the team was formulated, it was kind of, we're coming to this from a all hazards, multidisciplined approach. We needed a place to work out of and we had the police station and the fire station right there. We offered to use our facilities yeah. to house these folks because truly wasn't a, a, we were there to assist. I mean, we were there to get them to where they needed to be, make the introductions yeah. and, and use whatever uh, local ordinances we could to try to help the investigation move along. But keep in mind that this type of investigation is led by the health professionals. Mm -hmm. It was one of those weird things I was just, I research sometimes statute. Where, where does something like this belong? Is this you know, we, we did it under emergency management because that seemed the natural place in the town of Hampton to put it. Mm -hmm. um, you go to bigger communities, you go to a Manchester or Nashua, they have code enforcement. They have folks um, that are health officers and they have a team. We don't have that because of the size of the community and the way we change gears so much. Yeah. The natural place to place, that, place this when it happened, talking to the manager and the chairman, was under emergency management because we're used to coming at problems using different assets from different levels of government uh, compared to say the health officer. Kevin does a great job and, and but as we all know with the growth work experience, he's a busy man. Um, and for him to try to take on something like this and coordinate this is really not what he's trained to do. Whereas 
that's what we do. So Kevin's part of our emergency management team, so it's just a natural place to have it for the town of Hampton to work it out of. But different communities, it's different strokes for different folks. For us, that's where it really needed to go. Did a good job, both departments. Rick? All three departments. Yeah. So basically, um, even though um, the Harris Sea Ranch uh, name was put out there over and over again, they really had, they didn't have any uh, confirmed cases of Legionella disease coming from their place. Nothing confirmed. One of the problems is it's good and it's bad. When this first broke the news and people started hearing about it, people trying to be responsible went out. If you talk to the folks up at uh, some of the uh, pool treatment places, they had a big sale. I mean, they had a big week as people went up and got chemicals and did everything they could mm -hmm. to try to clean up and remediate the problem If because mm -hmm. that was a wide area that it was reported to be in. Wow. So everybody in that area was trying to do the right thing and, and clean up and make sure if it was them, <coughs> they were getting rid of the bacteria. But in that process, that can also stymie the investigation to actually zero it into where it was. Yeah. So the Harris Sea Ranch, uh, again, the chlorination level was significantly higher than normal that would you, you would see in your own tub or a pool. Um, could there have been Legionnaire there? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, it wasn't it, found there when they it tested it. It wasn't found there when they tested it. Yeah, and it's it, unfortunate names get put out there. And the only thing I would caution people on, I know this has been a very troubling issue for a lot of people uh, in town that obviously litigation is ensuing, um, that we would yeah. probably want to yeah. limit our commentary on that issue and at some point if we want to go into a non-public, just some of the things I would have no doubt that at some point uh, some of the people sitting here, me and the fire chief, are probably going to be deposed by counsel for either side. That's just the normal process when lawsuits are filed. Wow. They, they grab everybody and ask everybody what happened. So I just I would be cautious about what we would comment on in an open meeting like yeah. this. Well, I think that's that's where a lot of it came from. It came from um, Facebook sites and things like that, and it's really a shame that, pe that people do stuff like that without really knowing. Uh, you know, I, I try not to get too worried about that. I, I know it doesn't help sometimes, but when you when, when I first heard Legionnaire, I mean, my, I was a kid when this first happened. I remember <laughs> when it happened in Philadelphia, and it was a scary thing. Yeah. It was this new disease that could wipe everybody out, and now, you know, people still remember that. When you break it down to what it is and what it isn't, um, you know, that bacteria is everywhere. It's only when it gets aerosolized and you inhale it yeah. that it becomes dangerous to you. Um, but thinking of it in that context of, of how these things can happen, um, again, it was a very big learning lesson for all of us involved. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the one thing I did appreciate very much was the representatives, including Commissioner Meyer from uh, DHHS and CDC folks uh, complimented the town that they had never seen support from the local entity on an investigation of this nature to the degree that they got from the town of Hampton. Wow. So that the work that uh, you folks allowed us to do in conjunction with them mm. did not go unnoticed. Yeah, well, I would caution people not to believe everything they see on those type of websites. I know that someone uh, put on there that I was closing my business and this and that and stuff oh like that. It's, yeah. it's uncomfortable. It's not helpful, but people do. Um, what about um, the, uh, is there any um, something to it that if people don't keep their hot water heaters, like their um, hot water heat settings you high enough? You want to keep your settings problem? high enough, and I would refer everybody, ben, again, back to the DHH website. There's great advice there on what you should be setting, what your hot water should be coming out of the tap, and then you can adjust the heat level in your hot water heater. But yeah, it, it, there's a certain temperature range where if you don't use the water and it just sits there at that temperature, that bacteria can grow. So that you know, there are standards that people there could are. investigate yes. of what they are. Yeah, because I was noticing that they also had the same problem at the uh, Veterans uh, Hospital in Boston. They yep. had Legionnaires yeah. disease yeah. there too. So it's a shame, really. Thank you for the way you handled it. I think you did an excellent job. I think the team did an excellent job. And you just shown us another reason why we should have code enforcement officers in this town. Yeah. And that would be part of my recommendation to you as part of this whole uh, issue is that, again, with Kevin, it, it, we did name three other deputy uh, health officers in the town, myself, the fire chief, and the assistant building inspector. But as we all know, uh, very busy people. We all wear multiple hats as it is. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we really got to take a hard look at giving some 
It doesn't have to, I don't think it has to be a full-time person. It could even be seasonal. But somebody with a little more expertise than one of us to go out and give have Kevin a, a hand with those health code issues, especially as we ramp up and we start closing down for our summer season, I think it, that would be very helpful. Right. Just one more quick. Um, we are going to try to work with Channel 22 to see if we can get the notices, because you did have emergency yep. notices there, mm -hmm. to see if we can get them in a format that's more easily read mm -hmm. for the members of the public. Because I, I know I had no. a lot of complaints. That no, we'll work with them to try to accomplish that. With it. Yeah. The second Thank thing you. you had on here was your uh, emergency management team. Yeah, yeah I, think, um, I think there are a lot of people, when these things occur, don't have a full understanding of emergency management. I can tell you I, I really didn't until I started moving up the ranks and you, you had to become part of drills and, and learning how the system works. And I think in this particular case, we really had two different areas that we touched upon. The town of Hampton utilized emergency management because we have a strong team. We do the drills. We practice um, and the relationships are there so we can accomplish a lot in any given task. But when you look at the, um, you know, and that's all covered under uh, RSA Chapter 21P, and there's a lot of detail into what it is and when, when you invoke emergency management. Generally speaking, it's when there's a declared emergency by the governor, the authority of an emergency management director is invoked and becomes the coordinator between the local and the state entity when things get beyond our ability yeah. to manage. There's nothing that prohibits the town from using the emergency management team and the director to a greater capacity, in which I think we do. I think uh, with a lot of issues where we're a little town, but we have big city problems on occasion, just because of the population and the things we deal with weather-wise yeah. with the beach, that we bring everybody to bear on it. We don't just say it's one entity handling it. We, we put a team together, we go out and we deal with the problems. We saw that when we had the storms, um, the flooding, uh, all of those type of issues, and now this most recent incident. This incident, really would come under communicable disease, uh, RSA 141. When you do the research as to who technically is in charge of that situation, it, it would be uh, the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Meyer on that one. So having extra people appointed as health officers was very helpful, but they're also all part of the emergency management team. So I think we have to look at that moving forward as to what is in the best interest of the town considering who we are as a town. You can look around us at different communities, and there's, di there's different variations of how they do it. If you look at the Seabrook uh, situation, they had a separate entity called emergency management. They just re recently merged that with the fire department, yet they still have a separate emergency management director working out of the fire department, mm. uh, Mr. Yeah. Tatone. If you go to Rye, uh, you have an emergency management director that's a police chief. They have a team and they have a uh, an assistant uh, emergency management director that's a civilian, a former town manager or uh, town administrator for that town, mm. is the deputy he lives in town. Uh, he's now a private citizen, private business. But he stayed, kept his connection uh, with the town in that capacity. Mm. So you see a, a variation of what emergency management is community to community. I think it's worth exploring here. I've had some preliminary discussions with people in town that might be interested. Some of the things that we can't do just because of our busy schedules and the, depart the, the department heads that we have, things like the, uh, the flood mitigation. Um, we, we have a, a number of calls every year because people suffer repetitive flooding lots. Yeah. That's really not an area as an emergency management director. I'm that versed in or have time to really explore for people. But there's nothing that says, you know, every community has to have an emergency management director. But there's nothing says that a, a emergency management director can't have a team or committee mm -hmm. working on those other issues that don't have to be current working professionals. They can be, you know, let's tap into our retirees. It's been a great resource for us. I mean, I look at the evidence, my evidence deck, Jim Mills. I mean, he's a retired postmaster, and he's done wonders in our evidence room. Uh, just a very meticulous, perfect person for that job. Um, I know of a number of people in the community that I believe the emergency management director should, at one point I thought it should be an independent issue. I think it still needs to be somebody, uh, one of the department heads, but there's nothing wrong with expanding that team mm -hmm. to bring some of these people in that have experience elsewhere in emergency management with the federal side, local, state. Uh, I believe there's somebody in town that used to be an emergency management director up at the uh, Portsmouth Navy Yard. That's somebody's experience I think we could draw on uh, if they're willing to help. 
uh, and I think they would be, in dealing with a lot of it's paperwork. With emergency management, it's not always you're out there doing, it's the paperwork you need to follow up. You know, we're in the middle now with FEMA trying to recover some money from the storms. Mm -hmm. For Christie, for the department heads, that's, that's a cumbersome thing to go to those meetings and trying to get to that line where they're gonna say, okay, yeah, we're gonna reimburse you. Those are the time consuming things. Uh, and again, I'm running a police department. You know, Jamie's running a fire department. It, it's trying to do that on top of that can be difficult. So I think it might be time to start looking at that. The other recommendation I'm making is, in my time, we've had a, a budget of $1,000. That really isn't realistic. We spent far more than that. We just take it from other budgets where we have to. You know, with the police department for utilizing them. What I'm recommending is that every year, because of our participation in the Seabrook drills, we get quarterly payments that add up to just over $12,000 a year. I'm recommending that in the budget for uh, emergency management, we put that sum into that line item. It's money we're receiving from the state anyhow for our participation, but that would just give us uh, a little more leeway dealing with things and a little bit less of robbing people to pay Paul from the different budgets. Mm. So, any questions? It's, it's a good thing we're having this discussion. It wasn't very nice having legionnaires come to town, but it's provoked us into, I think, a very worthwhile discussion. I appreciate what you've said, Chief. Thank you. Gina? Yeah, I, I uh, appreciate the discussion as well, and I would hope that maybe we could take some of the Chief's recommendations into consideration in the near future to mostly provide support for already very busy department heads. As we work on the budget, we'll have to remember all this stuff. Yeah. 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 That's the only thing people got to remember. You know, we, we, right. we have some deficiencies, but I think we do a pretty good job. But if we're going to improve, it is going to be a funding issue. Did want to drop out. Uh, we have one of We've been working, uh, trying to secure some vehicles that we can get into those high waters with so we're not running our, our fire engines and cruises through them. Mm -hmm. uh, we did secure one uh, two and a half ton vehicle that we're working to get into uh, down to the PD probably the uh, beginning of next week we should have that in of our inventory. So we'll at mm -hmm. least have one to get get through the winter and the hurricane season and the storms and we'll work on another one. Very good. Jen, you got Good. Rick? Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. Have a great night. Next one we have Fire Chief Ayotte from the Fire Department. On the Zoll Auto Pulse purchase. And with your permission, I've asked our EMS officer Nick Denio to join us. Good evening, Good evening gentlemen. gentlemen. Yeah. Tonight, we come in front of you to ask for your assistance in granting a waiver. And this waiver is uh, part of 718 uh, 5 1, which I believe Christy already read to you. This yeah. is a waiver due to the fact that what we're looking to purchase is a sole source technology. We've already come before you before to discuss our Zoll monitors, which are used during cardiac arrest and during treatments of all other patients. Uh, we have software that goes along with that for the cardiac arrest. Uh, now what we're coming seeking is CPR adjuncts. So for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, we're looking for a machine, a mechanical adjunct, to assist us with um, compressions. Hmm. These devices will actually take over that role. As you know, cardiac arrest is the most critical patient that we'll treat. And in doing so, it requires us to do something up to a standard now with science that's telling us that we need to change out our rescuers every two minutes. In order to do that, that's very labor intensive. Yeah. We're already dispatching an engine and an ambulance company to cardiac arrests. Um, this changeover is supposed to happen throughout the entire call uh, until we get return to spontaneous circulation for the patient. And in doing so, that, that changeover every two minutes, it also takes place in the moving ambulance. This is a dangerous spot for our providers to be standing up in the back of a moving ambulance, no tether, no yeah. seat belts yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. What we're looking to do is purchase this device and then make it safer for them because this is a uh, mobile device that it looks like a backboard. You've seen backboards before. Uh, it's about a three quarter backboard with a belt that straps around the chest and it provides compressions wow. by compressing the chest approximately 80% of the, of the volume. The efficacy of this machine, the, the studies that have been performed have shown that this is certainly the best device out there, and that's why we come to talk to you about this today. There are other devices that are out there, uh, piston-driven devices, but they tend not to stay in position very well. This one has a much better return on sp spontaneous circulation, so we've decided to go with the same brand that we have with our cardiac monitors and the software. We want to continue with Zoll. They make a product called AutoPulse. They're a little over $10,000 a piece. 
uh, along with the batteries. This total cost, I believe, comes to $42,660, if I'm not yep. mistaken, right? Yep. And what I would like to do is purchase them from Fund 27, which, as Christy had stated, is at $393,344.46 currently. Uh, I'll take it from the new equipment line item, and I feel very comfortable that when we deploy this, we're going to see an immediate uh, benefit to our patients. Any questions from the board? Hmm. So it's, it's pretty clearly laid out. I, uh, I think that's amazing, and, and I thank you, Nathan, for, for getting this together. Um, it certainly looks like it's going to be beneficial. I'll make the motion. We got any other questions? Nope. So it's coming from the EMS yeah. fund. And, it, and it's a single source, so it's because, yeah. because it's already one that you already use. It's the Zoll product. That's right. Yeah, I, I just and so it goes along with the other equipment you sure, have. If you want to talk on the name. Yeah, the the uh, the monitors have a code review software that we use to CQI uh, these cardiac arrest calls and pretty much any cardiac call. You can download that information from the auto pulse as well. So. We can overlay that with our actual manual compressions as well as the, uh, the mechanical compressions from this device and, and pull the whole call together. Mm. And then this, this information will be transferred uh, to the cloud and then downloaded into the patient care report. Yeah, right? currently our DFib pads have an integrated accelerometer in the middle. It's called a puck. So we can look at things like compression fraction, which is the amount of time you're actually compressing the chest. The AHA recommends between 60 and 80 percent of the time you're actually doing compressions. So what this device will do is help overlay that time where we have to stop compressions to move somebody from either like a third floor apartment or off the beach or within a store or something like that. You, it's impossible to do compressions while carrying somebody on a backboard and this device will actually allow us to keep our compression fraction really, really high and uh, the, the outcome is much better for the patient that way as That's well. That's amazing. Interesting. Yep. Technology. All right, yeah, so. Technology would be great. I've made the motion. Yep, and a motion. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Being one of those people that's ridden around in the back of an ambulance doing compressions, I'm sure this is going to be a <laughs> You know the danger. Yeah, before, absolutely. absolutely. Before the chief goes, I have one quick question for him. Yes, ma'am. Um, on the protective clothing, and I think the last time you and I spoke, you said that you have ordered um, some turnout gear out of this year's budget, and I notice on your protective clothing line, you have 22,000, um, no, 23,132. That's, uh, that's an old number. That's an old number? Okay. Yeah, so we've, we've received four sets this year. Four sets. And they've been distributed. Yep. And I have five remaining as primary sets, and as, I, as we've discussed right. uh, with, with the town manager, we're looking to move forward with a capital improvement for the second set. And so you will have that included in next year's budget figure. It's actually part of the capital improvement plan. Part of the capital right. improvement. Excellent. Okay. And that would be how many sets for next year? Forty. Four. Four zero. Forty. Forty. Right. Excellent. One hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. Excellent. Well, thank. You. So, and also we, we we talked back in the spring about you going to nine men during the summer, which I think that's worked out pretty good. It has worked out tremendously well. Yes, as a matter of fact, and um, you know having the appropriate staff is everything you need the, the mm -hmm. personnel to do the job um, I'm maintaining that currently and again as I talked to you when we when we discussed this at the beginning of June um, or end of May as it were we're looking to make sure that we stay within our constraints of our budget uh, there are a couple of the projects that are going on right now that will I know that Christy had said that we're at 66 percent uh, 64 percent out of 66 percent of the year uh, there are a couple of purchases that are going on right now that that number is very slim so we're keeping a very close eye on that mm -hmm. uh, thankfully I have to tell you too that we have not had and not good we have not had anybody get injured and and be out long term that's one of the things that that's a, the uh, a great unknown as you you know if somebody gets hurt they may be out for several weeks while they recover and that transitions the overtime account significantly so we're paying attention to all of it and I hope we uh we look at when it comes around to Warren article time that we look at uh, commanding at 10 so that we can finally have an ambulance back at the beach. Yeah. That would be, I think, uh, very important. I think so. that would be very important as well. We've experienced that a couple of times this summer as we talked about during some of the heat waves when we put on additional personnel throughout that, that time and the ambulance was stationed at the beach. So we had five and five, five at each station, uh, three on the engine company, two on the ambulance. 
and on the ambulance that was at headquarters on Winnicott Road, they also cross-staffed the ladder truck. So it altered our, our deployment a little bit, but the increase in manning has certainly, our staffing has certainly done a tremendous job for us. Absolutely. Just real quickly, when you and your firefighters went down to Lawrence and Andover, did you gain a new respect for, for gas down there? Certainly. Uh, it's very dangerous, you know, and it's not something to be toyed with. Um, one of the things that I have to impress upon everybody that's listening was that the mutual aid effort that went you know, during that, that first 12 hours especially, right. but then throughout the course of the, the weekend, was an absolutely exceptional lift. Yeah. And it wouldn't have worked if we didn't already experience that type of mutual aid on a normal daily basis. Right. If we have a fire, or if we, last night there was a significant call on 95, mm -hmm. there were three communities plus a private ambulance that were working together on that um, call on 95. And we do that all the time. Right. Adding more staff, is just adding more. So when we were dealing with the staging areas, we had 35 yeah. pieces of apparatus. It's firefighters who speak the same language doing the same job. And it, it really worked well. But that gas stuff would scare me. So. All right. <laughs> Nathan, Thank you very nice much. job. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Too. Good night. Town manager's report. Uh -huh. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> the State Department of Transportation will hold a public informational meeting on Wednesday, September 26th. That's this Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the Marston School uh, to present materials regarding the reconstruction or replacement of the Hampton Harbor Bridge. Huh. Either or has not been decided on yet. So it may be a reconstruction or it may be a complete replacement. Please come, observe what's going on, <clears throat> have an opportunity to uh, review whatever plans there are currently for the state and uh, try to support something to be done for the bridge. It's the number one red line bridge in the state and has been now for a number of years. The uh, Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission will meet on October 10th, 2018 at 10 a.m. in room 205 of the Legislative Office Building in Concord. Those interested, please go. Please support the commission and its work. Uh, we continue to move forward on the replacement of uh, sewers and drains on Anne's Lane. Please find alternate routes so you are not delayed in your required travel. Work will continue through mid-November, which means periodic closings of the uh, facility, the, the roadway will occur during that period of time, right up until mid-November. Uh, and be careful, people are out there working in the street, so it's kind of a dangerous situation. Uh, the State Department of Transportation is working on the Tide Mill Bridge on Route 101. Uh, they have now put up traffic temporary traffic lights, so Good. traffic may be held up for a few minutes, but yeah. in fact it seems to be flowing and flowing fairly well. Uh, it's, it's the only time I think it's, it's kind of slow is uh, I noticed in the afternoon uh, between 5 and 6 o'clock there tends to be a lot of traffic backing up coming from the west towards the bridge. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Help. Um, <laughs> The State Department of Transportation will shortly begin paving on Route 101 in Hampton. As you probably noticed, there's an awful lot of work going on in various intersections. They're cleaning up the pavement. They're cleaning up the, the ground surrounding the pavement so they can, in fact, uh, start their work and get it done as quickly as possible. They intend to try to do that this year. Ah. The current refuse collection policy, as was suggested by the board, mm -hmm. is uh, currently under review. And as you can see, I have a, a few pages of review going on. Yes. There's probably about 50 pages here. Um, I'm hoping that by our next meeting, I'm going to have something for the board to review so you can put your teeth into things you've been talking about, so to speak. The um, contract uh, for assessing is currently in the Department of Revenue Administration. They are required to do a 10-day review of the contract that was proposed. As soon as that contract is received and approved by the Department of Revenue, we'll be in the process of signing the contract and issuing it out to MRI. Uh, we also have, uh, I, I, I was requested to make a report on the Colony Motel at Hampton Beach. And I've given each of the selectmen a, a memo from uh, Town Council. Uh, we have, in fact, talked to the conservator that was appointed in Massachusetts to conserve the property, and he is looking at appointing a conservative here. We've asked to have the building boarded, and we've asked them to hire a security agency to check the building at least daily. Yes. So there's nobody on the property. Good. 
good. Uh, they've indicated that they wish to do that. Uh, and what I would like to do is I would like to request, in accordance with Town Council's memorandum, uh, the board to approve Town Council to be able to go to the Superior Court, uh, excuse me, probate court, to assist in the appointment of, of an administrator for this, this function so that we can move this forward without any hiccups, if I can phrase it that way. We want this to move quite quickly and quite effectively, so. I'll make that motion. Do we need that? Second. Yes, it needs to be a motion. Okay, move to authorize the town attorney in the name of the board to file a petition in the New Hampshire Circuit Court Probate Division for the appointment of a New Hampshire guardian of the estate of Daniel Ferdin, if necessary, to enable the buildings and real properties to be secured in such a way as to avoid exposure of the public to health and safety hazards. Motion seconded. Any questions? I have a question. So I thought I was under the impression that they were already going to appoint an administrator. They need us to do so? No, we're just not taking a chance. If it doesn't get done in short order, we're give, giving a town council the authority to go to court to force Good. it to be done. Good. Okay, perfect. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. okay. Um, we have, um, we are currently working with the cemetery trustees on uh, work at the cemetery and uh, town council has dictated a, a memorandum which I've handed to all of you with regards to the cemetery. Uh, we have discovered and have been working with the former private cemetery association. We've managed to pull all those records out. Uh, we would uh, like to petition cooperatively with the cemetery association to the probate court for the county to uh, take the funds that are in the cemetery association, which were originally supposed to come to the town. The association has been eliminated. The charter has been eliminated by the Secretary of State for failure to file. There's only one living member of the association left. So filing wouldn't be appropriate at this point. Um, we'd like to discontinue the association and take the funds with the association's approval and the court's approval and place those with the town trustees of trust funds in the expendable trust for maintenance of cemeteries. We ask the board to approve that concept. Any questions? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Uh, how, how much money is in there, do we know? About $170,000. So a sizable it, amount of money. Wow. Is, is this a motion we need that's written here? Yes, sir, it is. So you want to, you, you make a motion. Make motion. So. Right, to authorize a town attorney on behalf of the town to prepare the necessary joint petition with Eleanor Whitney, the association's retiring treasurer, for filing in the probate court to bring about the dissolution of the Hampton Cemetery Association and to transfer its funds, the trustees of trust funds, to be held in the cemetery maintenance trust fund. I'll also move. Excellent. I'll second. second. I have Any a question. questions? When did they uh, dissolve that association? How long uh, was that? The state dissolved it apparently in 1995, uh, no, 2005, I think. I have it here. Um, was dissolved in um, 2015. Was when 2000. That. Well, they they took the action in 2015, 16. Okay. But um, they did administrative administrative suspension and avoided the charter. Is what they did. So. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. That kind of concludes what I had. Uh, we are working on the rail trail agreement, and I've given the board a memorandum to bring you up to date on where we are on that. Um, and I expect that we'll be replace placing that on your next agenda. We're trying to get that finished, get it to you, so you can do some some thinking on that and see where we want to go with it. I, yes. I'm, I, I point out that I am in favor of the state buying the rail the rail bed. Uh, as you know, we have protected it with zoning in this town so that it can only be used for transportation instead of building, selling a piecemeal. And hopefully that will come about because the state will have the funds to, to, to expend uh, to purchase it. Um, we also have sent out, we had uh, a few, not many, just a few, about 20 uh, properties in town that some prior public works directors had authorized the, those properties at the time we were making money off of recyclables, we're not anymore. Uh, gave them um, refuse carts 
to deposit their recycling with our recycling vehicles. Uh, we're no longer making funds, so we are, we have notified them that we're going to discontinue that service and we're going to pick up those carts and put them back in service. So that's being done now. I got my letter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Anything for the town manager's report? Yes, yes um, I do. And by the way, we never should have done that recycling in those condos, but it comes back to bite you. Um, I agree with you on that rail trail, but you said we're going to have a little more in-depth discussion because I have a few questions. I, I think the board has to I'm not gonna spend some time now. digesting that entire yes. report, yes. and then we can talk about it in depth if you okay. wish. Okay. Um, let's see. The sewer user fees and... Uh, are we going to have, you, I know that, that this has been a topic of discussion, uh, are we going to have a discussion with uh, Public Works on whether we do or do not do it or how do you do it or what, what, what will the... You mean to build sewers separately? Yeah. That's something that the board is going to need to discuss if you want to move in that direction, but it also requires a vote of town meeting. Okay. At least uh, on one subject within that, which is yeah. the bonded indebtedness as to whether or not it remains a general obligation bond of the town or whether or not yeah. it remains an obligation uh, of the sewer users. So somebody has to decide that. <clears throat> it's not critical to the entire matter. Um, but there will be some, a lot of fewer people paying for sewer. Um, there are several pros and cons. So I, I agree. Is that in the report? Wouldn't that be something on a business, a new business yeah, or business. old business? It's under old business. Yeah. So oh, okay. Is that something to bring up on an agenda item someday? Okay. Well, we can bring up on the old business. Any, yeah, okay. any board member has okay. a right to bring up something on the old business. Absolutely. So, anything else, Mary Louise? No, thank you. Okay. Regina, on the manager's report? No, I'm good, thank you. Jim? I'm good. Rick? <coughs> um, I just wanted to say, I, you know, I also got one of these uh, letters about the um, condo, and I don't think that everybody that got the letters necessarily has been, they, I don't think all the condos have been using the recycling. They may not. Some of them are, some of them are not, but we just want to make sure that we do collect yeah, the, the containers know, that are out there. I know the one, uh, the, the condo that I'm an owner of, I don't believe that they do use it. Yeah. Some of them do, some of them do not. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we had the docket cleared completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only I had was on the work on Ann's Lane. I, I, I've talked to a couple of people down there, and they seem to be a little ahead of where they thought they would be, and, oh, and, and yeah. things are going fine, So, yeah. which is good to hear. They so, are in advance of where they you know, thought. It, it's, uh, it's good to see that that road <laughs> is getting actually completed and will be done. You know, good It'll have the primary coat on it and then the finished coat next year. The right. spring, right. right. Good okay. time of year. To be it is. Year. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to say something about Anne's Lane because I, when I came back from Vermont, you know, they were like done for the day. But I got to tell you, just the way they put things away at night. I mean, I was up in Vermont and some of their roads up there aren't even nearly as in good as condition as Anne's Lane was when I got back and it was in the middle of construction. So I just wanted to thank all those guys for doing such a good job. Yeah, they seem to have been doing a, a great yeah. job over there. All business. First thing is the uh, conference update. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, Any WWA? <laughs> yeah, actually, the reason why I went to the conference was because one of the things on their agenda was about the PFAS and dealing with it in New England. And I thought it would be good to maybe go get some additional information on it so that people can realize that we're not the only ones and that this stuff is everywhere and that Aquarian was there as well. Actually, Kyle McMoran actually gave a presentation. Oh, my And he actually won an award on um, an article he had written in 2017. He was presented by one of the former uh, New England Water Works presidents. Wow. So, you know, it, it gave me comfort to uh, know that it seems like we got a great company that's uh, trying to keep the water safe for us. And I know that a lot of people would like it to happen a little bit faster than it's happening, but I think at least New England seems to be working on it. And uh, there was a couple things I wanted to just say to the board about some things I heard that I thought were very interesting. 
that New England Water is working on communicating all this a little bit more to the public, to the everyday public. Oh. Because I think the public does take things for granted, clean water, waste and so, uh, wastewater and drinkable water. And uh, I'm hoping to, I became a member of the New England Water Works Conference just to make, get their information from them. So I'm hoping that when they start with whether they're going to do social media, I think they're going to be having a chronicle debut coming up that we can, uh, it will be something that I can follow. And I know that Representative Bean and Mesmer are heavily following it on the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission, which I'm hoping to go to that meeting on the 10th. And I wanted to relay some of this information to them, so I wanted to share it with the board first. I've been trying to get Aquarian with the help of the town manager and the town council to look more at increasing block rate structure for charging customers, which is actually the preferred rate uh, for a lot of people that were presenting at New England Waterworks. And what that is, it starts out, you get charged a um, unit price, which is what the cost for the water is. And then depending on use, you get charged more. And it's done in a way so that if you're a high conservationist, you're gonna get charged less. But then obviously if you have a business that might use more water or you have more yeah. kids in your home, things like that, it's all these different tiers. Yeah. And it's set up and I actually understand it now. So I'm hoping that <laughs> Carl was at the meeting with me that maybe at our next Aquarian meeting we could get down, <laughs> and now that I know a little bit more about this, I mean, I think that New England Water Works is saying that it should be done, so I think that it's something we need to fight with to get the water company to do. And as far as PFAS contamination, I just want to touch on that a little bit. I found out a little bit more about the Vermont, how they came up with their number and why it's so low, is because they actually took children from the ages of zero to 12 months into consideration, which I know Representative Mesmer has been pushing uh -huh. for New Hampshire to do. Huh. So hopefully, like all this gathering of information, and I know we received an email from Representative Bean on as far as some of the recommendations the commission's gonna be making mm -hmm. at their next meeting. Yeah. I think we need to stay on top of it. Uh, we need to get as much information as we can. The Interstate Technology Research Committee has developed a PFAS team, and there's a website to that, which I can maybe share some of this information and get it to Christy for the website. If anyone is interested in getting more information on PFAS and how it has directly, directly affected all of New England, not just uh, Seacoast, New Hampshire, I would highly recommend going on and taking a look. It's a little bit more comforting, almost the same way that the chief was talking about Legionella, once mm -hmm. you get more information about it, more everyday information, things that have actually happened with it, what's been done to prevent or treat it, they're working on it. And also, another thing about it is the way to treat it, because I know we're trying to get Aquarian to treat the wells, the granulated activated carbon is the go-to right now, but there is a lot more development on that. Mm -hmm. So before we spend millions of dollars, we want to make sure that it's something that's going to be long-term so that we don't have to, you know, change it quick again when the technology changes over. Hmm. So if anyone's in any interested, I have a lot of notes on this, and uh, maybe I can put something together formally, but I just wanted to fill the board in on that. So if anyone has any questions about it or... I want to thank you for going. You, you've, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. you've given our board a little bit more depth to what... Right. We need to know. Well, I mean, I was, you know, it's... It's something you're interested it's in It's like anyway, just so getting more... Just more information on it, Absolutely. you know, outside of what we're dealing with specifically right here, to know other people are going through a lot of similar cases of the same thing. So. Absolutely. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, Regina, where you had the list of um, what was going to be brought up at the meeting, and I turned my list into you with a couple of you know, check marks and comments and stuff. Do you think that the people who were at that conference pretty much agreed with the uh, stated goals? Oh, you're talking about, you're actually talking about the other conference I went to, right. which is the oh, New okay. Hampshire Municipal Association. Oh, okay. So when we yeah. finish I get, up with the, I yeah, the water one. I will, I will, I do with, do well, you passed out all this stuff. 
I know a lot of stuff. Any, any other questions on the on the water issue? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, we had a copy of that uh, presentation that Carl did in Waterworks magazine. You gave or me the something. channel, yeah, actually. Yeah, Carl, uh, you know, because I have a friend that has a water company, and it's uh, he's very well respected, so that's nice, and he seems to do a good job. That read very well, uh, the article that he wrote. And what I wanted to ask is what you were talking about charging for the water. Is that mean? Does that mean that the more water that you use, uh, you know, like the way it works with electricity? If you have a business, the more electricity that you use, then you pay more. Right. But they would set you up like they actually. The town of Sharon was there, and I think they have their own municipal water in mm -hmm. Sharon, Mass. So the director okay. of the public works was there, whoever it was, and he, they have, I think, four or five different tiers for Sharon. So you have your base rate, which is always the same for everyone. It's mm -hmm. like $32, or whatever it was. And then from there, it's like they grouped a lot like elderly or like a single or, mm -hmm. you know, a couple in a house. Yeah. Like they would be in the lower <laughs> tier because they probably conserve a lot. They don't use too much water. Mm -hmm. And then the next level would be probably like a more like four person family mm -hmm. home with kids that are like, yeah. you know, you got two or three showers happening every day. Mm -hmm. That's like the second tier. And then the third tier, which is when you're a little bit over that. And then the fourth tier is your maximum level. But really what you have to determine is what the minimum is and what the maximum is, and then you can sort of figure out everything else yeah, in between. Right. But yeah, so I mean, if you're like a laundry mat, well, this was strictly for residential, but I don't see why in theory you couldn't do the same type of thing for Correct. a non-residential yeah. business. You can. You know, so mm -hmm. it would be, you have like the minimum would be zero to 4,000 gallons. Uh, what would that be, a day or? I'm not really quite sure, but 4,000. Yeah, billing period. Then you're in that, and then if you're like, like four thousand yeah. to six thousand, you're in the second tier. Yeah, and then it keeps yeah. moving up. So it's you're getting charged for more of what you use. Mm -hmm. and if you can serve more, theoretically, you should get charged less. Yeah. We have, we have been getting good PFOA reports from John Hurley of Aquarian. Mm -hmm. I think Aquarian's done a really good job yeah. in stepping up with the public communication. Now you can talk about the NHMA. <laughs> okay, that was pretty much straightforward, but there was one, and they actually said that it was the most, the biggest turnout they've had in like over 25 years. Oh, wow. For municipal representation, I think there was like almost 60 municipalities there. Wow. So yeah, it was really, it was really good, and um, all of the Seacoast was there, you know, Portsmouth, Seabrook, Hampton, Hampton Falls, Northampton, mm. and uh, we all pretty much agreed on most of the things. The only thing I thought was really strange was, I guess NHMA is gonna lobby for towns that have the option of making the town clerk's position appointed, which I think is not a good idea because I think that the yeah. department that handles elections yeah. and ballots and things yeah. like that. You're so right. I was, that was like the only thing that really threw me off. Yeah. Everything out was pretty much straightforward and what I thought was going to happen, but I guess they're trying to just give more power back to the municipalities, but I think sometimes certain departments shouldn't be crossed. But other than that, it was it was a good turnout, and I got to meet some uh, senators and some selectmen that I hadn't met before, so it was a good experience for me. Very good. you have a question on the NHMA? No, I just, basically you said that everybody was pretty much in general agreement except for that because yeah, they I had think some good points on that and the state had good representation there so good. it's good to say good anything on nhma all right and they also had an old business mary louise yeah i asked the chairman um last week i did get in under the deadline um if we could at least discuss our policy toward um, regarding the Municipal Association, I am concerned uh, with the discussion we have, and the minutes aren't out yet on the 17th of September, but I did a quick review today. Um, I was a little concerned about the discussion at our last meeting because it seemed, and I, and I respect chairmen, whoever, it's not just you, it's someone sitting in the chair. 
um, it, it seems um, undemocratic or something like that to not have uh, the budget committee, number one, and to not have each and every one of us um, as selectmen being uh, able to access the municipal association for guidance uh, when we feel that it's uh, proper. Um, at least, I may, and I may have misconstrued, but my understanding as I thought about it was that uh, the, the chairman, a chairman, I'm not picking on Rusty, a chairman uh, would be the only one to contact the NHMA if we have questions. And I don't think that is appropriate. Um, we are all independent elected officials. We work as a board, but I think um, we should, each of us, we're paying Didn't 17. Didn't we have a policy on that? Yep. We, we no, did no, a policy. no, 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 policy. Wait, Excuse well, me. Yes, it's a vote me. of the board. Wait, it was no. a vote of the board that we had a policy on yes. that and that we agreed on the policy. I didn't vote on policy. The vo you, board voted to make it when? that it's that way. When? We can do it right now if you want. We, no. We, what, it was last year, I think, that it was Again, okay. to reaffirm no, we it. Did it we did We've it done this year. We've done it before. That is, yeah, we yeah, have we, voted, Mary Louise, for that. I don't remember it, but well, I'm still bringing it up. We've done it, it year after year. I'm still she bringing can, it she up. She has a right to bring it up. She's a for board discussion. member, so. Do you want to make, we, a, why don't you make a, make a motion, motion we, that we do it that way? Well, the re I want to explain to you why. Number one, uh, I think that uh, I am not happy as one member of this board to be told that I can't access the New Hampshire Municipal Association for guidance. We paid $17,904 in this year's budget for the guidance of the Municipal Association, and sometimes it's very helpful. In addition, the members of the Budget Committee, think about this a little bit. What's going to happen next month? We are going to turn over information to the Municipal Budget Committee, and they make the budget and they may not be terribly happy about being denied access to the Municipal Association if they have questions. That's what the Municipal well, Association... Is that a threat that, a threat that yeah. we don't I do it? I think you it. should make that, that motion. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I don't hold interrupt on. you guys, Mary and Louise, I'm getting a little hold tired. Hold on, yeah, hold on, please. Uh, Mary Louise, hold on a second. First what? of all, we get our legal opinions from our attorney. Yes. Our attorney, we do not get legal opinions from the NHMA. May our I? legal opinion comes from our attorney because that's who we pay for. We don't pay the NHMA for their legal opinion. So if, you have, if you're getting two legal opinions, which one are you supposed to go with? You're supposed to go well, with the one that you're paying for. Well, could I just is, say one no, thing real quick? Wait, wait a oh. minute here. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> you... you brought up a good point, but why are we paying $17,000 to the Municipal Association if not for some guidance? It's not just Next, for guidance. Well, okay, then just stay, stay put for a minute. When I chaired the Budget Committee in 2016, and we had a problem because everybody got all excited over the RSA, 91A, et cetera, and I called uh, Attorney Buckley at the NHMA. Now, I have known Judy Silva and Attorney Buckley and a, a number of them up there for a long time. I have interacted with them in the past as a member of the Budget Committee. And he was very hostile and he had a real, he had his back up and he didn't want to talk and he wasn't allowed to talk to me and all he could do was talk to the selectmen. So I went to Mark and I complained. And Mark did say he would call Attorney Buckley and give him permission to talk to me, or give me permission to talk to Attorney Buckley, or however it turned out. So I called Attorney Buckley back, and he was very charming. And I explained the problem I was having with the 91A situation. And he said, oh, it was no problem. All you do is use BCC. 
That wasn't necessarily a legal opinion, but it was guidance. And I said, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. I'll do that. You told me I should do that, so I'll do that starting right away. But I came in and talked to Mark two days later, and I explained that I had talked to uh, Attorney Buckley, and I said, thank you for allowing me to talk to him. And, <laughs> and Mark said, I don't agree. Wonderful. And he's the opinion that we paid for. And he has a very good reason for that. Well, whatever. We are paying this outfit. I have never. I go back to 1978. I understand. Right? That. And I have never seen a board of selectmen or, or a budget committee or anybody else, but it's mostly the board and the budget committee who want this information. I've never seen an impediment to these these individuals, these elected officials, to going in and calling the NHMA. What is because, the problem here? Because again, we get our legal opinion. But that's fine. From our town attorney. That's fine. Not and only if that, they can be asking the selectman's representative. She can bring it back, Correct. and we can deal with it and that we, way. And we have and that's also what this board has voted to do. That's what this board had voted to do, to allow. If the, if the budget committee has some questions, they can bring it to Regina, and she can bring it to us, and I dare say there probably will never be a reason to deny it. Right, and I just wanted to say one thing, because I know, Mary Louise, you just asked, what is the point of paying, what are the different reasons for paying the 17000 I think right. one great reason is what I just went to. Absolutely. Because we get a yeah. vote on that. Yeah. The Good town conference. of Hampton gets a say yep. in that whole... I mean, there's a lot of things, something I didn't even bring up about how they want to put in legislation that will support having the state take care of state-owned properties. Because guess what? Hampton's yeah. not the only one yeah. that's going through things that are happening, yeah. or, happening or not happening on state property. So being able to partner up with Portsmouth or Laconia, yeah. whatever the towns were, I mean, that, that's I mean, to me, that's power. That's communities working together. To let the state know what they would like. So but the budget I think committee is part of this community. I understand that. And they're elected the, officials. The board has already budget. decided on what to do. So That's right. because yeah. if the budget committee gets sufficiently riled up. I don't know what the budget's going to look like next year. We can't. That, we all have. Well, that's not we okay. all have no. Just let me. Like that. Number one, the NHMA puts out bulletins all the time. They also put on workshops all the time yeah. on right to know laws. So you don't have to talk to somebody up there. They, they gave a workshop here prior to that on, on the right to know law and everything. So mm -hmm. they, that's one of the reasons that we belong there. Like Regina said, you go and you're with other towns and you're coming up with legislative suggestions for, for doing that. That's another thing. And every organization has a chain of command mm -hmm. that we go through. And I think, it's, I think it's absolutely ridiculous for you to sit here and, and threaten that if we don't do something, the budget committee is going to look at the budget differently. The budget committee will look at the budget in an intelligent manner with what is needed in the town. And it's not going to depend upon how we allow them to talk to somebody. Well, there's there's many things things that are it's, presented it's, that they can attend if they'd it's like It's something to. that has never been done in the past. It yes, has it has. I hate to tell you, it's been voted on years. many, many I years. I don't remember the... Well, then you better... Uh, yeah. Anything else and on that? It's been done over and, and over again. And I have again. one more quick, question, quick uh, comment. I received uh, the same thing all of you did with from the BTLA on uh, Mr. Nichols' um, uh, presentation to them. Uh, are we... Are we going to be scheduling the hearing that the BTLA requires, or is that going to be turned over to the new uh, MRI people for assessing? How do we do that? Because there is a time frame. It goes to your hired assessor. It goes to the hired assessor, so the be, hired assessor will be It will once be handled the contract. by the hired assessing company. Yeah. Correct. And they have a copy of that? They will when they get they, hired. They will when they get soon hired. As soon as soon as they get the contract. So we don't miss them. the deadline, which no, I no. think is January something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just. Okay. Worried It'll be done about long that. before that. Okay. Good. Anything else under old business? Yeah, I think it's under old business. I'm just saying that we're in the budget season right now, right? We are certainly in the and budget. We're putting season. a budget together to present to. 
pass on to the budget committee. Right. Pass Which, on to the board of select. Do you mind? Do you mind? On time. Yes. Yeah, do you mind? It's going to go to you folks first. Yeah, I know that. But what I'm saying is, are we taking a good look at departments, and I'm sure you are, and having them justify what they're spending in, especially looking at departments that might be over right now, and, and talking about you know why they're over. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know Christy has come in and said that we're in good shape, and she keeps us up to date on everything. Right. But just so that we're presenting a budget that, that is a, a budget that's been well thought of, and each department has justified what they're doing, which I'm sure they will be doing, mm -hmm. and which I'm sure then the budget committee will give a good look at. I think so far, I've only sent one budget back for complete revision. Okay. Uh, on that same, same topic, uh, mm -hmm. Regina brought it up to me earlier yesterday uh, about the, uh, oh, yeah. the the pay scale study we had. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be talking about that next week mm -hmm. and seeing how that reflects on the budget okay. and as we move forward because, That's you know, we, we, paid, well, we right? paid for that thing. We <laughs> talked about it a, a while ago that yeah. we were going to do it. And so now it's getting it's into budget season yeah. time, so now we should be doing yeah. that. And mm -hmm. looking at it, so, that's, so thank you for thank reminding you. Yeah. me that. And thanks for putting it on. I have old business. Yes, sir. Okay, I want to add that um, there's many presentations that the organization that we were just referring to has, and there's schedules of events that go on, and oh, yeah. particularly when there are new board members, that's what's one is a really good time to go. How is the food this time? <laughs> oh yeah, it, they had like a breakfast, they all, continental breakfast okay. type thing. It was they, like always, of food, yeah. they always Danish have the best muffins, food. Yeah. How much is uh, that out of the 17,000? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, those are the things that are, they try to make it 16. fun. <laughs> no, they, they try to make it fun and interesting. So the, the, there's many times Sorry that people could that. go to these things if they want to go. All they have to do is get in their car and drive there. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to know is, like, I noticed now the TV's gone off again, um, which that's fine. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be. They're not be. playing the TV on these screens. What? They They're were not early. playing. They no, were early. No, they were. It was on. What they're doing is they yeah. play the presentation. Play the presentation yeah. so everybody can see it. Yeah, right. Yeah. The yeah. presentation, oh, okay. not okay. us. Right. Okay. That's well, right. I know that the other de night when I was here um, for Nancy Sty with Nancy Styles, at first it wasn't. But then it did come on, right. um, which was good. Planning um, board. And then on, and I'm not complaining. I'm just asking, you know, what 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 are we going to do here? Uh, most importantly, at the zoning board, they weren't on. But I did go back and say, you know, what's going on? Uh, and they said, well, we're not doing it that way anymore. But then they must have had a second thought because all of a sudden the presentations came on. But with this whole place filled with people, if they don't have those TVs on, and the uh, easel is over here with all the presentation, Can't not one person could see what mm -hmm. was going on. A few brave people stood up over here, yeah. but it makes no sense not to have it on. And I think that we have to make sure it is on, particularly for things like the zoning board, and probably the planning board, and uh, you know there must be other things where the people that are sitting here, the audience needs to be, I mean, you can see it at home, but the people that are going to be making some comments, if they can't see it, there's a problem. I have a recommendation that we have the fellow who's the employee now Rick for Cantor. the cable, yeah. 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 have him come in okay. and yeah. discuss the issues yeah. that we have. I think yeah. that's a great idea because I think, you know, we have that issue. We also have the issue now I don't have Comcast so I don't see channel 22 but I did notice tonight when I was in the, the control room yeah I did see what Mary Louise is talking about how how lousy the the quality is of it so he is the one to talk to because he's the one that's in charge of it our, our two technicians that are out back do a wonderful job but they are not the ones that you need to right. talk to we need to talk to him right. so and it some seems to be better when you look on your computer so so you know we have him come in next week yeah. If that's Excellent. what you'd like, and as an appointment, just that's to great. discuss yeah. the TVs and it, it, well, he can give us an update on where we're at now that we get all this new equipment and right. maybe how there's some things wrong, and, and then we'll have some uh, some maybe okay. objective. Yeah. Well, I'm Excellent. not blaming anyone. No, I'm, I'm not either. Saying, I'm just saying because yeah. it is new. It, it's a change, yeah. so yeah. we'll have him come in, explain the changes to us, and explain uh, you know what we're going to see that's different and. Give him some feedback on what we're hearing is stuff that we don't we hear and they don't mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. 
I spent an hour and a half with him. Yep. So, yeah. so I don't I don't have Channel 22 either. I watch it like streamline it. It doesn't seem bad. But I guess it's different if you just have it on cable. It looks different. I guess right. I don't know. Well, I, don't I put it on my t I put it from the computer onto my TV and it uh, comes out yeah, great. Yeah, that's like what I do. It comes yeah. out yeah. great. Yeah. So um, all right. So okay. we'll have him come in next week. Yes. Yeah, I, okay. I still have some old business. Okay. Um, I just want to go over this uh, one time once again because um, I want to mention that we have the department heads come here on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a schedule of when they come. Um, and I want to also say that I have seen, particularly in all the time I've been here, scores, if not hundreds, of department heads put it in writing to be on the agenda. It comes in our packets all the time. And most importantly, if you want to make sure that all of the selectmen are going to know that you've uh, gotten in contact, you definitely need to put it in writing. Because once you put it in writing, by Wednesday at 5 o'clock, it goes um, to the uh, chairman and it goes in our packets in the, uh, the little mail slots that we have and it <coughs> goes electronically mm -hmm. on the web pages mm -hmm. on our websites mm -hmm. for all of us to see and for all of us to be aware and we wouldn't have uh, the problem that evidently there's some type of a problem or a misunderstanding here. Uh, and you know I want to thank Jane for all that she's done but there's nothing was done differently if you go on writing it would have everyone would have known about it and many people put it in I see it every week there's people that ask to be on the agenda and that's the way it's always been the whole time I've been here for the last 14 years okay thank you you all Anything under new business? I just had one question, actually, for Fred. Mm -hmm. um, someone told me that lives down by Sun Valley that the walkway there has been, I guess, covered with sand, and they've never seen it like this before. And she takes her handicapped neighbor down there on a regular basis. And I guess they haven't been able to get down there in quite some time. Yeah. All we need is a few thousand dollars to fix it. Okay. We have to tear it all up because Ooh. it's it's something that we didn't realize there is a restriction on the deed that was given to us for that property. We found okay. it upon research, uh -huh. and that, that thing is, we're supposed to maintain it. We didn't know that. Ooh, okay. okay. Uh, it's going to have to be completely rebuilt. It was washed out at the end, and what we did is we put sandbags down there so people didn't drop off with a, a uh, huge 10 to 12 yeah. inch drop off or yeah. 15 inch drop off. Oh, okay. So it's, the whole thing is scheduled to be rebuilt. Oh, all right, perfect. Yeah, she said she's just never seen it like that before. So yeah. she was Is that erosion, Fred? No, it's just it's been a bad year between wind and rain and, and the ocean just well. washing <coughs> stuff up and, oh, and causing problems. Uh, that's a bad area down there for windblown sand. It, 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 because yeah. you've got a little alleyway there that basically is, is, is contained, oh. and the sand blows in there and just piles up. So. Oh, okay. I'll let her know that. We, we, I, have, oh, we have maintenance problem there. We're going to solve that. I also want to ask about the letter that we discussed for Bill Watson. Oh, yes. Uh, because we were having our last meeting with him on um, September 27th, and we're going to... This is Friday? Uh, no, this is this Thursday. 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 Yeah. And we're going to be going to the... Uh, we're having a little... I guess there's going to be a little thing at the Galley Hatch That's Forum nice. or whatever, and I'd yeah. like to be able to uh, present that. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Well, he's done a lot for the yeah. state and oh, for yeah. uh, representing some of us, too, mm -hmm. at some of these yeah. state meetings. Bill's he's always been a great guy to work with. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So really I'll make sure to stop by before okay. then. We'll, we'll Closing that. comments? No. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a need for a uh, public session to, for three personal items. Okay. Very quick. So I'll make the motion, motion to move to non-public under 91 a 91 a colon, colon three, three Roman uh, Roman one <laughs> a. Okay. Second.
<laughs> Motion seconded. All those in favor, I need a roll call. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank Aye. you, Aye. Channel 21. <laughs> 22. Huh? There, I Ooh, believe yes. there is. The third